GRC analyst interview questions. Um, so I'm going to go over a couple of interview questions for a GRC analyst role. Um, um, first one is walk me through the risk management framework and how you were involved in any of the phases of the risk management framework. So your answer there should be, obviously you need to know what the risk management framework is. You need to know what reference NIST document, uh, which is NIST 800-37. Uh, you need to know that the uh, phases within the risk management framework begin with prepare, select, um, categorize, um, select, um, once you select that you implement, and then you assess, and then you authorize, and then you monitor. So you need to know those seven steps of the risk manager framework. Um, you need to also know that it used to be six phases till they added the prepare phase, which is also sometimes known as uh, step zero. Um, so within the phases of the risk management framework, you could either be uh, a, an assessor or an information system security officer, ISSO. As an ISSO, you need to know that you are involved in every phase of the risk management framework. And as a security control assessor, you're involved in um, the assess phase and the monitor phase. All right, so you should be able to speak to um, your resume and speak to that question. Um, another question could be mention the guidance documents used in the phases of the risk management framework. So you should be familiar with the NIST special publication documents, the 800 series. So uh, FIPS 199 for the categorized phase, um, NIST 800-53 for the select phase, um, also FIPS uh, 200 for the select phase, also NIST 800-60 for the categorized phase. The implement phase, you could just say NIST 800 series because there are a bunch of um, NIST documents that apply to the different uh, security controls that you will implement. Um, the, for the assessment phase, NIST 800-53A. For the authorized phase, NIST 800-37. And for the monitor phase, NIST 800-37. One thirty-seven and um, eight hundred fifty-three eight. You should be able to speak about those documents and what they signify. Um, another question you could get asked is mention uh, or walk me through how to conduct a risk assessment. So in this question. Um, you want to mention any tool that you use for uh, risk assessment, um, or if you use uh, templates or Excel spreadsheets, uh, you can mention that as well. Um, you have to speak to the fact that a risk assessment involves the risk areas, the description, the impact, the likelihood uh, of that impact occurring, um, the risk of decision um, and things of that nature. So uh, that will be how you respond to uh, that question. Another question could be mention two documents that you prepare during the process of your assessment. Uh, so you could say the risk assessment document, you could say, uh, a questionnaire, a checklist, uh, those are the types of things that you would uh, mention. You could also be asked, um, what does GRC stand for? A simple question like that, which means governance, risk, and compliance. You're going to be asked questions like, 
what is risk? Um, so risk would be the probability that uh, a threat exploits a vulnerability. You could also be asked, okay, what is a vulnerability? A vulnerability is a, we a weakness or a gap in security controls. Um, you could be asked, what is a threat? A threat is something that exploits that vulnerability. Um, you could get asked, uh, what are the trust service criteria? Uh, this is a question that's related to uh, SOC 2 audits. So um, in this question, you could say that there are five trust uh, service categories, security, availability, um, processing, uh, integrity, uh, confidentiality, and privacy. And uh, just mentioned that security is the one that's mandatory and the others could be optional. Um, another question you could get asked as a GRC analyst is what type of uh, compliance standard would you uh, use if you were dealing with credit card payment transactions? So you would say PCI DSS. They ask you what um, governance uh, or compliance standard would you use uh, if you were dealing with uh, privacy? You could mention um, uh, GDPR. Um, if you get asked what is the um, compliance uh, standard that you would use if you were dealing with healthcare uh, organizations, you could say high trust or HIPAA. Um, let's see, um, question you could get asked is what are uh, four types of uh, risk responses that your either your authorizing official or your uh, chief information officer or whatever a party is responsible for accepting risk in that organization. What are the, the four risk responses? So you could say a risk could be transferred. So you could transfer risk. You could avoid risk. You could mitigate risk. You could accept risk. Um, another segue question could be, what is uh, a risk acceptance or, and how do you document uh, a risk acceptance? So a risk acceptance would be um, when you determine there is a risk and um, you've done your cost benefit analysis and um, you, and when I say you, I mean, uh, the authorizing official or the party who is responsible for accepting risk, when that person decides to accept the risk uh, of that vulnerability. Um, so that risk acceptance needs to be documented. And um, you're most of the time going to document this on what's called a uh, risk acceptance form. So in that risk acceptance form, um, you should have the description of the risk, uh, why the risk was not able to get uh, mitigated and why they uh, accepted to um, accept the risk, chose to um, accept the risk, um, the expiration date of that risk, um, the impact, and then also compensating controls so compensating controls would be like, okay, we know that we're not able to apply this particular security control, but we're applying this instead to help uh, minimize that risk, all right? So, and then also it should have a um, section for the person accepting the risk to sign off on. Um, another question you could get asked is, have you worked on a security plan or um, an SSP? So it's an, an SSP would be a system security plan. It's a document that has a lot of information about um, 
a system at, as it relates to security. So it's going to have your system name, um, description, POC, um, the list of security controls applied to the system and how those security controls were implemented. Um, so if you're asked, have you worked on a, um, are you familiar with a security plan? Have you worked on a security plan? You should be able to mention the different sections within a security plan and what work, specific work you did while you worked on the security plan. So you could either review a security plan um, create or develop a security plan or um, update a security plan. Um, another question you can get asked is, what is the difference between a policy and procedure? So a policy would be more of a general uh, statement, whereas procedures would be step-by-step um, guide. So this is how you install a firewall. Step one, blah, blah, blah. Step two. Um, another question you get asked is, tell me a scenario where you went above and beyond at your work. So these are general questions that may not only uh, applied to cybersecurity could be applied to any uh, industry. So you want to say something to the effect of um, even though um, your client failed to provide artifacts, you um, gave them ample time to provide the artifacts, you gave them um, examples of artifacts to provide, uh, you had uh, working sessions with the um, client so that they could um, pass their um, audit or assessment, whatever it is. That's just an example. But uh, find something that um, uh, you've actually done and have that in your back pocket just in case a question like this comes up. You could also have a question that says, uh, tell me a scenario where you overcame uh, difficulty or difficult situation. So have those type of behavioral questions ready uh, to, to answer. Another question you get asked is, what is your approach to make sure that poems or deliverables don't get passed through by your client? So um, you need to make sure, to answer this question, you need to make sure that you're uh, either sending reminders you're um, sending need by dates when you request for documentation or evidence. Um, you're having working sessions with the client and um, you're tracking the progress, you know, uh, either on a weekly, daily cadence. Uh, it could be 50, you know, tracking the progress to say, oh, well, for this particular um, task, it's 50% done. For this particular task, it's 30% done. And then um, you know, have those meetings to, to make sure that you're tracking those items. Don't forget to subscribe and like. We're also on IG at Cyber First Solutions. Thank you.